Welcome back guys. Uh, today I thought I'd take a look at a mainstream distribution and uh, I want to see how it stacks up to some of my favorite distributions and I'm going to restrict this to the Ubuntu class of distribution. This is the new Linux Mint 17.2 Raffaella with the Mate desktop environment. Now the uh, install went smooth. Uh, Linux Mint, they do a nice job with keeping everything pretty solid and stable. Uh, one issue I had was the uh, GUVC view. The, um, the version that is uh, in the repo <coughs> when I downloaded would not work um, and that's kind of a known bug with a GUVC view um, I think it was version 1.7 that comes with it <coughs> and what I did um, I've run into this before so I have a fix and basically you need to in order to install a later version of GUVC view into Linux Mint and have it function properly all you need to do is add a PPA so if I go into my files I have a, a fix for GUVC view <clears throat> and basically it's just adding this PPA uh, before you either before you add GUVC view or um, if you do add it and it doesn't work you get a black completely black window <coughs> excuse me if you get a completely black window uh, then just do a sudo app get remove GUVC view and then add this uh, repository uh, sudo add apt repository ppa colon pj dash assis slash testing add that repository you don't have to worry about any of this this is different but if you add that uh, repository you'll pull in I believe it's the GUVC view 2.2 which functions perfectly so if you run into that problem with an Ubuntu distribution on GUVC view just go ahead and add this repo and reinstall GUVC view and you'll be good to go so that's what I did I have GUVC view functioning uh, I installed Kazam with no problem I ran through all of the updates with no problem now uh, it comes out of the box this is the Mate version it comes out of the box with the expanded menu which is very nice but for the sake of this video I prefer to have the Mate standard menu which lays everything out a little bit um, in a more self-explanatory process for the sake of this video so if we look at accessories you've got the uh, usual um, group of accessories archive calculator um, and going on and on there's a USB stick formatter image writer notes search pluma so you've got the usual uh, bunch of accessories for graphics it came with GIMP GTHUM image viewer simple scan internet Firefox is the default browser with Pigeon. You've got HexChat, Thunderbird Mail, and Transmission. And then for Office, it's got the, uh, I believe it's the four point, uh, let's see. <clears throat> it's the 4.4.3.2 build. And if we get down to sound and video uh, I, lo I downloaded GUVC view Kazam and OpenShot everything else came with it VLC video sound Banshee for zero so I downloaded these three just to process this video system tools you get this usage on analyzer file browser you can handle Debian files GW package installer 
log file viewer, new login, and on and on. System monitor, and of course a terminal. Uh, you've got places and system. Now there's preferences, so you can do most of the configuration that you need. It's got most of the usual uh, configuration options. It does have a Compiz settings manager. Uh, and administration, <clears throat> you have backup, driver manager. Now I'm on a, a desktop computer that has built-in graphics and audio, so there are no uh, proprietary drivers that I need to install, so this really isn't doing anything for me, but if I were to install on my uh, NVIDIA machine with the Broadcom Wi-Fi, uh, that's when I would use the driver manager. I have login window, network printers. Now, uh, I haven't installed my printer yet, um, but I'll go ahead and do that while we're, uh, while I'm making this video so that you can see how smooth that goes. There is a software manager. You can configure your sources. Synaptic package manager is there. Time and date, update, upload manager, users and groups. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the rundown on the system. It's a good basic system. Uh, it's useful for beginners. Um, and let's go through that uh, printer install just so we can see how smooth that goes. So what we're gonna do is, well, let's see, we're gonna need a terminal and we're gonna need to go to the downloads folder and the printer. So we're gonna CD into downloads slash printer. Okay, and then I have a file in there. I'll bring that up so you can see. There is an installer file that's provided by brother who makes the printer that I'm configuring. So this is a download that um, is available from the brother printer website. You might find a similar uh, install file on your Epson or your HP or uh, any of the other major brand printers, but brother really does a good job with Linux drivers. Okay, so I'm in the printer directory and I need to run this installer file. So basically, the command is sudo bash and then you type out the name of the file. <clears throat> then you leave a space and you put the model name of your printer. Mine is MFC-J870DW. Once I hit enter, it will ask for my password, and then it's gonna walk me through. Now basically you uh, say yes to everything, and it'll go through and pull in the files that are needed to install my printer properly. Now you can see it's gonna populate that printer folder that I created with the files that it is uh, pulling in. And it's gonna do that all the way through the process. You'll see, once I'm done, you'll see several files there. You don't have to do anything with those files, but that's why I recommend creating a printer folder within downloads. That way your downloads folder doesn't get all messed up with these files. So when it says, will you specify the device URI, I'm gonna say yes. Then it's gonna bring up a list of options. And because my printer is on my wireless network, all I need to do is specify the IP address. So you see option 13 there is the IP address. So I'm gonna plug that in. Then it's gonna ask me for the IP address. Once I enter that, it'll ask me if I want a test print. I'll say yes. And it should print a uh, test page. Okay, so now it's done. I don't know if you can hear the printer starting up. 
and it is printing a test page. I'll show you that. And so you can see how smooth that was and how simple it was to configure my printer. All I'm going to do after that is I'm going to go into the menu and let's see preferences. I want to find print settings. Uh, printers. There is my printer. I'm going to right click it and set it as the default system wide. You can see the check mark there. So now if anyone on the network prints, it will print through this printer. And it's almost done printing. I'm going to X out of the terminal. And as you can see, there is the Linux Mint test page printed on my brother printer. So now my printer is set up and ready to go. Now the uh, Linux Mint 17.2 is a very nice distribution. Where I run into a problem with Linux Mint is by virtue of the fact that uh, I don't see a whole lot that they have brought to the table beyond a standard Ubuntu distribution dressed up like Linux Mint. And as an example, if I compare, now you know as in the past I've mentioned that I prefer for an Ubuntu distribution, I prefer uh, Linux Lite, Peppermint OS 6, Voyager Ubuntu, and Deepin also does a good job. <clears throat> but my top three, I guess, would have to be uh, Linux Mint, I'm sorry, Linux Lite, Peppermint 6, and Voyager Ubuntu. The reason I say that is because if you review those distributions, you'll find that they have everything that you see here, but they add several proprietary features that they have developed on their own. Very useful functions that bring a lot to the end result of the distribution. Now I'll use Linux Lite as an example. If you take a look at Linux Lite you will see that beyond the standard, now again and I, I realize that I'm looking at a Linux Mint Mate uh, and Linux Lite is XFCE. I'm not reviewing the desktop environment. I'm reviewing the distribution itself, the nuts and bolts. Uh, if you if you want to compare XFCE uh, in Linux Mint to Linux Lite XFCE, the end result will be the same. Linux Lite brings a lot more to the table than Linux Mint. If you take a look at Linux Lite, they went ahead and in their new 2.6 version they have the Linux Lite control panel which is extremely well done and extremely helpful for the new user. They have the light tweaks which are there's a little portion pictured here where you have uh, a lot of functions outlined that help you maintain your system. They call that the light tweaks. Then they have light software and basically light software is a listing, a comprehensive listing of software that you might find that the average user would need. So there are software packages there that fulfill almost every possible requirement of someone switching from Windows to Linux. And then you've got the light upgrade feature which lets you upgrade your system uh, as Linux Lite progresses through their various stages. Um, 
if you install Linux Lite 2.6, you can do the upgrade through, if once 2.8 comes out, you can upgrade through Lite Upgrade. So my point is that while Linux Mint is an extremely nice, stable, clean distribution, I don't see a lot of new features. I don't see a lot of uh, additional features beyond those that are available within Ubuntu. If I go through the Linux Lite or the Linux Mint website, and I go through, <coughs> excuse me, and I go through the changes from 17.1 to 17.2. They were, there were a lot of uh, nuts and bolts behind the scenes kind of uh, inner workings type changes, but I don't see a lot of new features such as these that I've outlined for you within Linux Lite. So while I would have to give uh, Linux Mint 17.2 a thumbs up as a basic distribution, I would still rank it behind Linux Lite and Peppermint 6 and Voyager Ubuntu which is another uh, the distribution that they've done a lot of additional work to make the uh, distribution unique not the same old run-of-the-mill so guys uh, I hope you enjoyed the analysis um, of course, there are millions of Linux Mint users, and it is usually uh, number one or number two on uh, Distro Watch, uh, and I fully appreciate the reasons for that. But I think that Linux Lite, Peppermint 6, Voyager Ubuntu, they all deserve to be mentioned in the same breath as Linux Mint. <clears throat> And as I said, I believe they bring a little more to the table. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that uh, discussion. Uh, and uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you soon. Take care.